What's up, you freaking geniuses? All right, so in this video, I'm gonna teach you what negative exponents are and how to solve them. And I promise you, they're not too bad. Okay, so if I had a positive exponent, that's easy enough, right? So if I had two cubed, this is equal to one times times two times two, right? And what is that equal to? Well, one times two is two, two times two is four, four times two is eight, okay? What if I had two to the negative three? Well, when we have a positive exponent, that means multiply, right? When we have a negative exponent, that means divide. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So here, instead of multiplying by two, I'm gonna divide by two, three times. Two. Okay, but there's an easier way of writing this also, because dividing by two, that's the same thing as multiplying by one half. So if I had one times one half times one half times one half. What did this equal? Well, remember how to multiply fractions, right? You just multiply the top together, multiply the bottom together. So the top, one times one times one times one. That's just one, right? And then two times two times two, that's eight. Okay, so these are both the same thing. Now, something I want you to realize is this eight is the exact same number we have in the denominator here, okay? so. 2 cubed is equal to 8, so maybe we could rewrite this as 1 over 2 cubed. And that's exactly how we solve negative exponents. We just flip the fraction and we make the exponent positive. Okay, and you might be wondering, well, hey, this isn't a fraction, so what are you talking about? Okay, well, remember, you can turn any whole number or integer into a fraction by simply putting it over 1, right? So if I wanted to write 4 as a fraction, I could just put it over 1. Right? If I wanted to write negative 8 as a fraction, I could just put it over 1. If I wanted to write 2 to the negative 3 as a fraction, I could just put it over 1. Okay, so we literally just flip this upside down. Okay, so the 1 is going to go on top, and then the 2 thirds is going to come to the bottom. And then the only difference is this exponent becomes positive. Okay, so instead of it being negative, we change it to a positive. Done. That's it. And then if we have to solve this, we can, right? So we could just write this as 1 over, and then what's 2 cubed? Well, that's the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2, right? So this is equal to 1 over, what's 2 times 2 times 2? 1 eighth, which is the exact same thing as this answer right there. So that's how you deal with a negative exponent. Okay, and real quick, in case you're wondering why I have these 1s written right here. Okay, well, they're very important for the exponents to work. Okay, so let's say I just got rid of them, right? What if I just got rid of them like that? Okay, so let's redo our answers really quick. Starting at the top, what's two times two times two? Well, that's still eight, right? What's two divided by two divided by two? Well, two divided by two, that's one. And then one divided by two, that's one half, right? And then what's one half times one half times one half? Well, again, that's one eighth, right? One times one times one is one. Two times two times two is eight. As you can see, these do not match up, but they're supposed to according to the proof, which is why we have to add this one at the very beginning. And then that makes all the math work out evenly again. So the one is kind of just hiding there. And another way you know the one is hiding there is two squared. That's equal to one times two times two, right? If I had two to the first power, that's equal to one times two. If I had two raised to the zero power, well, that's just equal to one, right? Because any number raised to the zero power is just equal to one. Okay, so that's your quick little introduction and proof into how these negative exponents work. But again, this is the main point. So remember, you can write any number as a fraction, just put it over one, and then we're just gonna flip these and you're gonna make this positive. Done, that's, that's it. So that's a quick and easy way of doing it, but we're gonna do some more complicated examples. But they're still gonna follow the same thought process. Okay, so again, if I had two to the negative three, I could flip it because this is theoretically over a one, right? So I could flip this, so I could write it as one over two to the positive three. And like we saw, this would just be one over two times two times two. 
which is one eighth, right? Now, what if I had one over two to the negative three? Hmm. Okay, well, this time the negative exponent is in the denominator, right? So again, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna flip this and we're gonna make the exponent positive, okay? So this two to the negative three, we're gonna throw it to the top. But again, we're gonna turn that positive. So that's two to the positive three, and then we're gonna put that over one, which is simply equal to two cubed. And what's two cubed equal to? Well, that's just two times two times two, which is equal to eight. So it's very important to realize that these negative exponents, they work both ways. Okay, so if they start in the top like here, you can move them to the bottom and turn them positive. If they start in the bottom and they're negative, you can switch them to the top and make them positive. So it works both ways. Okay, so these are, are like two main cases, okay? So I'm gonna divide this into case A and case B. So I'm gonna expand on both of these a little bit more. All right, so to recap, right? So if we have five to the negative two, that's the same thing as one over five squared, which is just equal to one over five times five, which is 25. So this is positive one over 25, or positive 1 25th. That's your answer. Now, what if we had negative five raised to the negative two? Okay, well, nothing changes. We're still gonna flip it, and we're gonna make the exponent positive. So this would equal one over negative five to the positive two. So very important to realize here, this negative number stays negative. The only thing we're changing is the exponent, okay? So the exponent was negative here, so we're making it positive here. But this negative five stays negative five, right? Just like this positive five stayed positive here, right? I didn't change it to negative for no reason. I didn't switch signs for no reason. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. This is a negative five, so I'm gonna keep the negative five, okay? The only thing we change are these exponents. So this went from negative two to positive two, right? This went from negative two to positive two. That's the only thing we change. We change the exponent. So what is one over negative five squared? Well, this is equal to one over negative five times negative five. So this is equal to one over, well, a negative times a negative is a positive, right? And then five times five is 25. So this is positive one twenty-fifth. With keeping that example in mind, what if we had negative five raised to the negative third power? Well, this would equal one over negative five, right? We keep it the same, but the exponent we change. So we had negative three here, so now it's gonna be positive three. So this is one over negative five times negative five times negative five. Okay, so what's negative five times negative five? Well, that's positive 25, right? So what's positive 25 times negative five? Well, a positive times a negative is a negative, right? And then 25 times five is 125. Okay, and that goes under one. So your answer here is negative one over 125. So again, we kept the negative five the same. The only thing we changed was the exponent, okay? We changed it from negative three to positive three. So we're gonna do a couple other quick examples and then we're gonna move on to case B. And then I think you're gonna be golden pony boy. Okay, so where are we going here? We're going here. Okay, we're going here. All right, so if you have negative five raised to the negative one, well, already I know my answer is going to be negative. Why? because I have a negative base and I have an odd exponent, right? So that means my, my final answer is gonna be negative. So remember, this is technically over one, so we're just gonna flip it and make the exponent positive, right? So we're gonna flip it, so we have negative five, and we're gonna make the exponent positive, okay? So any number raised to the first power is just itself. So negative five raised to the first power is just negative five. So our final answer is one over negative five or negative one fifth. 
And what did we say in the beginning? Our answer is going to be negative because we have an odd exponent with a negative base, right? Was it negative? Sure was. Okay, and this example is going to be in case you have a mean teacher, because I know some of you have a mean teacher. I've had mean teachers. So I'm going to be mean really quick and give you negative 5 raised to the negative 0. What is that? Okay, well, this is simply 1. Well, remember, 0 isn't actually positive or negative, right? So if I wrote negative 5 to the 0, well, it's not like I put a positive sign here, right? Because it's not positive and it's not negative. It's just 0. So remember, any number raised to the 0 power is just 1. And one more for good measure. If I had 0 raised to the negative 3, well, remember, all these integers are just technically over 1, right? So we're just going to flip it and then make the exponent positive. So 1 over 0 cubed. So this is just equal to 1 over 0 times 0 times 0, which is just equal to 1 over 0. What's 1 over 0? Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call, in the biz, undefined. Why is this undefined? Because you can't divide by zero, okay? So since you can't divide by zero, this is simply undefined. Okay, so that was case A. Now let's move on to case B. Okay, so for case B, we're gonna have the negative exponent starting in the denominator, okay? So again, what do you do in this case? Well, it's pretty much the same thing as case A. All you're gonna do is flip these, okay? And you're gonna make this exponent right here, positive. Okay, so let's flip it. So we're going to have 5 over positive 2, right, positive 2, over 1. This simply reduces down to 5 squared, and 5 times 5 is 25. There's your answer. Okay, so what if I had 1 over negative 2 raised to the negative 2? Okay, well remember, we're going to keep the base, right? We're going to flip this fraction, but we're going to keep this base. So it's going to be negative 2 raised. So instead of negative 2, we're going to have positive 2. We're going to put that over 1. Okay, so in the numerator, we just have negative 2 times negative 2, and then a negative times a negative is just a positive, right? So then 2 times 2 is 4, and then we have this 1 right here, and then 4 divided by 1 is just positive 4. Okay, and remember our little rule from earlier when we're talking about negative bases, right? So if we have an even exponent, our answer is going to be positive, right? So right off the bat, I know my answer is going to be positive. So that's a good way to check your final answer if, if it looks funky for some reason. Okay, so what if I had 1 over negative 2 raised to the negative 3? Okay, so we're going to flip this again, right? So we're going to have negative 2 raised to the positive 3 right? I'm going to put that over 1. Okay, so that's equal to, I'll just write it out real quick, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, right? All over 1. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 over 1. So your final answer is simply negative 8. All right, guys, so that's how you deal with negative exponents. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, definitely leave it a thumbs up. And if you still got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will definitely try and help you out with those. I got a whole exponent playlist if you need to check anything else out. And in the next couple videos, I'm going to start getting into multiplying and dividing exponents with the same base and different bases. So if you need to check that out, definitely check it out. And I'll see you there.